Alrighty, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy White Album here. Welcome back to some more Witch on the Holy Night. Last time we left off, uh, don't remember. I think it was just pretty much uh, the history of mages and magecraft. Nothing too special. So let's just hop right into it. Got my beverage of choice with me. You know me, gotta keep my whistle very wet for whenever I uh, talk because I am known for tongue tying myself sometimes. <laughs> All right, here we go. Without getting fucking G fuel all over me. All right, here we go. With the day's work behind him, Sojo returned to the mansion. Yes. Doko o sakashitemo, nikai no hall kara agareru kaidan wa koko dake da. This must be it. It's the only set of stairs leading up from the second floor hall. It was just before midnight. This was the scene that awaited him beyond the rickety staircase. Oh, hold on just one moment. I already know I just started, but I want to do something real quick. All right, here we go. Not much surprised Sojiro, or rather, being surprised had become normal to him. This scene, however, was enough to leave him speechless. The room allotted to Sojiro, no matter how he looked at it, no matter how he ran it through his mind, without a shadow of a doubt, an addict. <sighs> this treatment stirred a tinge of anxiety in him. Just as he was about to flop onto the taut sheets of his bed, wondering if he could make this work despite his share of other problems, he noticed an awkward curtsy, so meager as to be useless. Something to use if you get cold. Consider it a gift. The message in the memo pointed to the meticulous personality of the author. The bed had been perfectly prepared. Carefully, Setting aside the blanket that had been painstakingly placed on the edge of his bed for him in case he needed it, he looked up at the sky. Though faint, the stars twinkled through the skylight. For a mountain boy, that meager light was more than enough for him. The stark contrast with the drawing room had caught him off guard, but now that he had collected himself, it was not so bad. This room fit his personality. Even if he was still not used to the building, he felt more at ease here than he did in any building in the city. Perhaps it was because it was built on a hill, surrounded by woods. The atmosphere here was a little closer to the mountains where he used to live. Oh, is it normal for there to be fog inside the house? He crooked his neck, pondering over the spectacle he had witnessed. On the way to his room, Sojiro had encountered what looked like a fog, or what looked like a, <laughs> what looked like fog in the foyer on the second floor. Ooh, interesting. The misty fog drifted into a portion of the corridor, reminding him of a swarm of mosquitoes. Look, I'm I'm from Florida. I'm very familiar with mosquitoes. I can tell you for a fact that's not mosquitoes. <laughs> As he stared at it, he swore he could make out a strange landscape. And as he moved closer to get a, a closer look, or to get a better look, I should have said. Again, out of nowhere, here inside of the mansion, a little blue bird darted purposely in front of him. Tori? A bird? The bird caught his attention, stopping him in his tracks. When he looked to check on the fog again, the strange scene had disappeared. This house has this house must have a draft. I'll ask Ozaki about it tomorrow. He muttered to himself as he sat on the bed. Meager as it was, the starlight peeping through the skylight calmed him. Yeah, this will work. Exhaling slowly, he laid down. 
For the time being, he had the essentials needed to live, and his bed was many times softer than it appeared. Thinking his worries seemed smaller than they were, he quickly drifted off to sleep. That was the story from when he opened his eyes to when he fell asleep. Just like that, the short night following the long night was over. For one thing was true. Sojuro was an optimist to a fault, but it wasn't the end of the world. Hmm, okay. Now, let us rewind five hours prior to this glutton for punishment going to bed. I wouldn't really call him a glutton for punishment, but sure, whatever. It was 7 o'clock in the evening, just after the unproductive discussion between the two mages and the boy had ended. Okay, so we're in Alice's view now. Leaving her roommate and the intruder in the drawing room, the girl walked alone through the foyer. From there, she headed to the West Wing. These were Alice's personal chambers, in which even her roommate Aoko seldom dared to, f uh, to step foot. The foyer was illuminated only by pale moonlight. Hard footsteps echoed through the dreary, moonlit lobby. In such mansions in Japan, there was no custom for removing shoes at the door. Hence, Alice crossed the foyer in her boots. She only removed them when she relaxed in her bedroom. Hmm. Suddenly, she remembered something from her childhood. She used to enjoy the feeling of the cold hardwood floor on her bare feet, and would walk around the foyer on particularly sunny days. After her father affectionately scolded her for it, she never did it again. What? Why would you scold a child for that? I feel like that's the dumbest thing to do. Also, I, I realize that fucking Alice is very westernized. Makes sense considering her first name is an, an English name. Though I don't know where her last name derives from. Obviously it's Japanese, but... Well, well, it would make sense that she's of Asian descent, but aren't considering she owns this mansion, but it's not like the considered, it's not like the normal houses that you would see in Japan. It's like, it's, again, it's very westernized. And I don't know why I bother. Aoko never does. She let out a quiet sigh. Alice's new roommate, who she took on after coming to Japan, would not comply to her instructions. Yeah, see, so. I'm, I'll assume that Alice comes from, I want to say, Europe. I highly doubt she comes from America, but she probably does come from Europe. They probably mentioned that, but I probably wasn't paying attention. That or it's been a while. Alright, here we go. Old habits die hard. Aoko would say changing into her slippers. Aoko might found it natural to do so given that she lived in a typical Japanese house through middle school. But every time Alice heard her flip-flopping through the foyer, she wanted to cancel their cohabitation. By now, Alice was not particularly bothered by it anymore. Human adaptability was remarkable at times, and ungracious at others. The emotional attachments of the past had proved far too brittle under the weight of reality. Oh, this little fucking blue bastard. <laughs> A little blue bird was perched on the banister. His tiny chirping made Alice stop and look its way. Leave him be for tonight. Right now, he is Aoko's problem. The lack of feeling in her voice made the bird tilt its head as it sang. Tweet, tweet, tweety, tweet, tweet. It trilled, as though questioning its master's uncharacteristic leniency. A promise is a promise. I can at least tolerate him for tonight. Aoko and the boy did go to, go to such lengths after all. She said to the bird, her voice betraying her discontent. If you win, I'll let you go. She would keep that promise in spite of the unquenchable desire to fight that burned in her chest. Also, she's a sleeper? When I mean sleeper, I mean she's like the one that looks very unassuming, but she's like, I will fucking kill you where you stand, right? <laughs> she's that type of person, or that type of character. But I didn't take any guarantees after that. Well, 
She scraped her win even with the handicap in her little game, but I won't let her strut around childishly run, uh, rubbing it in my face forever. Perhaps it was perfectionism bo born from a fastu oh, fuck. fastidiousness? I guess. But despite her prim demeanor, Alice was a sore loser. Ah, get wrecked. Nerd. <laughs> It did not matter to her whose magecraft was superior. Losing the game had proven hard to move on from. The little bird fluttered its wings in agreement. Drinking in Alice's contempt, it was itching to dive bomb the invader. Yeah, I would like to see the little fucker try, bro. Like, I would, if I, if I was in Sojo's place, I would send that bird through a fucking ceiling with a swift uppercut, dog. Like, you really think this little thing's gonna fucking do anything? Like, what the fuck? Come on now. Let's be real here, game. <laughs> Alright, I do not endorse the abuse of animals, but it's a magical thing. It's it's a magical being, so it could take an L or two. It looked like a soldier saluting a, a superior officer as it preened itself. The blue bird turned to face its master. As light-hearted tweeting seemed to display a desire to deal with Sojuro first thing in the morning. Yeah, I'd like to see you try. So, ne. Indeed, if he gives us a reason, let us put him in a bottle, or perhaps a book. Except her words lacked any bite. On the face of it, they were the chilling kind one might come to expect from a witch's lips. But then again, so tame as to remind you of a certain robin's flapping. It's only a matter of time. And there's not much of that. And there's not very much of that. My patience has its limits. Aoko is in no position to dote on others in the first place. I give her five days. And then. And then what, Alice? When that time came, expelling him would be simple. Alice was well aware her roommate was a pragmatist with no vision. The situation she created would not follow her to wait around, or would not allow her to wait around. She could only afford to protect that boy for three or four days at most. Beyond that, Alice sent Aoko to crack and say something like, You take care of this, Alice. Will I wait until then? Or will I lose my patience first? Whichever comes first, the end result will be the same. Alice would suffer no more irritations. And protecting a witness, let alone allowing them to live in her mansion, was an indignity. They put some Asher marks on that motherfucker. <laughs> Alice looked up, fascinated by the dense fog that had crawled into the foyer. Above the fireplace was a single mirror. Roughly three feet in diameter, it decorated the wall where one might find a painting. Its surface was faintly clouded and vaguely reflected the foyer's appearance. This is what I get for losing the snark. I suppose that means the mirror is out of commission for the time being. The little bird joyfully chirped at its master's mumbling. The little bird attempted to imply that there was no need for her to lift the finger, not if the nuisance would fall into the mirror of his own accord. Nuisance? Again, it's not his fault, but I'm not I'm not jumping on that fucking whole ordeal again. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> or perhaps, had the little bird had not sang, Alice would have come to the same conclusion. <clears throat> for some reason, she recalled an earlier conversation. How about now? Still think this is the safest option. In her response to her question, the boy inside the bottle shrugged his shoulders and answered, and my man's like, eh, eh could be better, could be worse. <laughs> from his perspective, the city and the mansion were no different. It seemed that having just moved from the countryside, everything was something he had never seen before. <laughs> I'm not proud of it, but I still have trouble writing, 
and the city rules are so complicated that I don't even know right from wrong. More than embarrassment, his voice was full of resentment. He was angry about something, though Alice could not tell what. But. That's why no matter where I go, I'm always in danger. It may be an exaggeration, but even walking down the street or talking to someone makes me anxious. No matter where I am, there's no guarantee I'll make it out. But here, there's someone that might show concern for a person like me. Sure, my reasoning is a little messed up, but I've never known such luxury. Her eyes welled up ever so slightly. Those soft words were something she could not brush off, because they made sense to her. Given that everything in the city was a danger to him, nothing had changed after coming to the mansion. In reality, he had no reason to fear this place in particular. If anything, if what if anything was different from the outside, it would be that someone here was his ally. With that view, he had been entirely sincere. His explanation hadn't con had it contained any flattering towards Alice, more pandering to Oko. He was simply speaking from the heart. I like it here. Perhaps having him wander into the mirror is more trouble than it's worth. I want to dedicate. <coughs> Ooh, voice cry! You heard that? <clears throat> I want to dedicate the mirror's function to searching for intruders. So if it looks like he's going to be swallowed up by it, do stop him, will you? The bird shook its feathers at her strange instruction. Alice looked away from the mirror and continued her walk. The bird chirped in protest. It's your job, Robin. At least get that right, would you? So its name is Robin? Nothing special like fucking Alistair or some weird shit like that? <laughs> Leaving the bird with that icy retort, she vanished into the west wing. All that remained was the moonlight and the little blue bird trembling at its perilous prospect of unprecedented change. Damn. Testing me there, game? Come on now. <laughs> you already do that with some crazy fucking words. Alrighty, there we go. Let's say we finished that chapter. It looks like we're on the next episode. Alrighty, let's go. Let's just hop in. Ooh. Shit, I should have saved. <laughs> I just realized I didn't save there. I just went hop I just hopped into it. That's fine though. Yeah, we could do this. Boom, saved. <laughs> Alright, here we go. <clears throat> Once long ago, I saw a beautiful bird fly overhead. Round and round, it circled the distant blue sky. How high it flew in this arrow when humans, not birds, reigned supreme. And yet the bird was completely uninterested in humanity's endless desire for expansion. Our creation was even higher homes, or the smoke bellowing from the industry's chimneys. The sky extends further than the eye can see. It belongs to no one. Not now, not then. The bird was a truly noble creature, flapping its wings powerfully across the wild, ancient sky. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I was not prepared for that to happen. Holy shit. Poor bastard. No. Come on now. Dad, I'm gonna kill the poor little birdie. God damn you. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. Until the sudden sound of cold iron, a wing is shot, a symmetry gone forever. Cruel and tragic, its body plummets downwards. Not knowing its fate, the bird frantically beat its wings till the very end. One moment, soaring with eyes to the sky, the next, crashing down to the dry, hardened earth. Alright, I bet you that's gonna be like some fucking... 
Oh, okay, hold on. This was the dream I saw. As I was saying, it's probably going to be some fucking metaphor for something that's going to pop up later on. <laughs> no matter how much I thought about it, its details remain clouded. What did the bird look like, for instance? Hmm, I guess that's the million dollar question, huh, game? Damn, are we finally back in the fucking school? Holy shit. How long has this been since we've been in the fucking school, dude? Hi. Episode 7. Are you for real? Alright, class dismissed. Hey, it's um... uh, 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 that's everything that will be on the test. Please don't share it with the other classes. You're the only ones I'm telling. Think of it as a homeroom bonus. Remember, if this class gets the highest scores, you can brag about it to the, all the other classes. Mr. Yamashiro. Okay, that's what his name was. I forgot. I fucking forgot, dude. How long it like again? How long has it been since we've actually been in the school? Like, since what? Like chapter two? I'm assuming, maybe. Last time we were at the school was when Alice showed up, and that was a while ago. All right, here we go. Mr. Yamashiro chuckled as he finished. This was typical of the kind of teacher responsible for year two, class C, the master at relaxing his pupils. I think you got it backwards, Mr. Yamashiro. You're the one who's after bragging rights. Yeah, then he can finally get Mr. Sakunata, Satonaka, there you go, off his back. We know he's been making fun of you all semester for our bad grades, sir. Uh, duh. We're like total washouts, except for our totally excellent sports skills. Please, though it might not mean much coming from me, high school is about more than just your test scores. Teachers Teachers don't really care that much about your grades, you know. Even if you all fail, it's not like anything bad will happen to us. I, I'm, I'm assuming you get fired, right? That's how that works. Like, I'm pretty sure if you if you keep having failing classes, then they're going to be like, yo, you're not suited to be a teacher, and they just fucking kick your ass out. I'm assuming that's how that would work. Like, 100% of the time. <laughs> Here we go. But there is one student who does bother me. I think you know who I'm talking about. You chose her to represent the entire student body. A monumentally awful decision. Oh, they don't know the uh, she who shall not be named. <laughs> She makes a deadly point to threaten to report me to the Board of Education, claiming my students' grades are the result of poor instruction rather than the lack of studying. I mean, that goes both she said if students' scores don't improve, she comes supervise my class herself. What kind of student even says such a thing? I know, right? What the fuck? That's. That is actually super fucking disrespectful, dog. The fuck? <laughs> she should not be named is a little fucking too, uh... She takes her job a little too serious, huh? The warm atmosphere in the room suddenly fell below freezing. The students of Class C now knew who the true enemy was. Ah, so Yamashiro-sensei Namu, namu. Right. I forgot Miss Yamashiro. Uh, I, I want to say Yamashiro, but it's my, Mr. It's... Yamashiro. 
It's Siro, not Shiro. I can't. I keep. I keep fucking that up. Mr. Yamashiro was the student body advisor. Sasuga wa ouen dan wo tachi naorase ta jouketsu. Kyoshi hitori taishok ni oikomu nado zousa mo ne. The student president managed to revive the cheer squad, so I wouldn't be surprised if she can force a teacher out of their job too. Yappari na, kaicho zettai toshi saba yonderu te. Ano hakuryoku dou nendai to omue ne shi. Yeah, I heard she can guess teachers' ages with 100% accuracy. I can't believe she's the same age as us. Hora, uchi no joshi to kuraberu to toku ni ko oppai teki ni. I mean. Look at her compared to the girls in our class. Her boobs are way bigger. Man. This game really just made me read that, huh? Sensei, Kinomi だけでも英語見に来とってもらえませんかそりゃ男子はみんな猿ですけど、こいつだけレベルの違う猿ですよ、絶対。Oh my god. Please get Kinomi out of class A, sir. It's hard enough with a class full of apes, but he's such a pig. あれでも女子。英組だけどあんまり成績良くねえよな。中の上ぐらいじゃなかったっけ。But you know, that girl doesn't even get grades for a class member or for a class A member. Kind of middle of the pack, right? そうだけど別にいいんじゃない。塾も行ってないし、生徒会仕切ってたまにバイトまでしてるんだから。あれで学年トップだったら逆に気持ち悪すぎ。That's the point, dumbass. She doesn't need to go to a cr to cram school. She's on the student council. And sometimes does a job or two. It'd be heinous if she got awesome grades too. Da yo na. Shui wa fukai chou ni makase toke ba in da yo. Totally. We should leave the good grades to the vice president. Oh, where is Toby Mar? I haven't seen that man in a hot minute. Ha ha ha. Ma ma ma, mina san. Uasa banashi wa sono atari de. Jigoku mimi to yu kotoba mo arimasu kara. All right. That's enough gossiping, everyone. It's not nice to talk about people behind their backs. Yeah, but you don't know that she has an entire fucking list of the entire school student. She has a list with the entirety of the of the of the fuck. What I'm trying to say is she has a fucking well, she had a list of every student in the fucking school to find out who the fuck saw her and Alice at a park. I feel like that's in, again that's an invasion of privacy, but sure. Yeah, so then I need to be careful. I'm not going to be able to get a lot of money. I'm not going to be able to get a in any case, good luck with your studies. Remember, if your grades don't improve, then winter vacation gets canceled. Ah, so let us see, Zuki-kun. Just a little bit. Oh, and Suzuki, could I have a word with you before you go? Mr. Yamashiro gathered his things and beckoned for Sojuro to join him in the hallway. There were no other students to be seen, despite it being break time between classes. Voices were audible in the distance, but the hall itself felt strangely calm and quiet. I I put I switched those words by accident. It's supposed to be、uh, strangely quiet and calm, but I felt it, it felt better the other way around. <laughs> Perhaps it was due to the sense of confinement created by the lack of windows. Usually, students spent their breaks either in the classrooms or on the ve veranda, or veranda. What the hell is that? What the hell is that? What the hell is that? The fuck is a veranda? Veran what or veranda? What is that? Like the schoolyard? Would make sense. <clears throat> what is it, sir? Yeah, so tight to your job, not in this case. Oh, nothing major. Scan my knee, kunna hanashi o suru no mo delicacy ga nai in desu ga kini natta no de. Dou daro. Sir, gakko ni wa nareta kana. Every fucking time, it never fails. When I think they finish stopping, they continue to talk like. Two seconds later, come on, come on now, come on game, come on game, can't do this to me. Sorry to bring this up right before exams, but I've been meaning to ask, how's everything going with school? You settling in all right? Oh. Though this level of concern from his teacher startled him, Sojuro felt reassured. It was only natural, after having to deal with such difficult personalities lately. Mister Yamashiro's trivial crust,、uh, questions were refreshing. はい。I don't blame them. 学校の作りや決まりなら、自分なりに分かってきました。友達も増えましたし。Yes, I think I understand the basis of school life for now, and I made friends too. そっか。それは良かった。うちのクラスは口の悪い面々だけど、その分気を使わなくていいからね。しずきくんと相性が良くて助かったよ。
Good. I'm glad to hear it. Students in my class tend to mouth off, so don't take them too seriously. I'm glad you're able to fit in. <sighs> Sojo's eyes shone brightly in appreciation. In Aoko's words, Mr. Yamashiro was a brutish, forgettable, downright detestable man who did not deserve the title of teacher, but Sojo found him considerate in his own way. Damn, Aoko, that's how you feel, dog? <laughs> Sorry everybody can't own the entirety of a fucking city, but you know, the land of an entire fucking city, but hey. I mean, he's just trying to get through being a teacher, but you know, fuck him, right? <laughs> Take it easy with your part-time jobs. We give students a lot of time off before exams, but don't push yourself too hard. また試験で困ったことがあったら周りに相談しなさい。一人で悩んでいても時間の無駄だよ。ほら、学校っていうのは話し相手にだけは困らないから。and if you have trouble with exams, just ask the other students for help. There's no need to suffer in silence. If this school has anything, it's plenty of people to talk to. With the wave of his hand, Mr. Yamashiro was gone. The pure heart of Sojiro gave him a solemn nod as if to say he appreciated the, or accepted. He accepted the advice of his so-called forgettable teacher and went back into his classroom. And then... Come again? You want my advice about girls? Sojiro had not wasted a moment in putting uh, Mr. Yamashiro's advice into practice. Yeah, it's like I've hit a wall with them. I thought about it and thought about it. But I realized that I'm not good at figuring them out. That's the thing about women, my man. You can't figure them out. <laughs> Sojiro averted his eyes, out of shame over his lack of insight. Well, damn, dude. You could have fooled me. I thought you were a man with all the ladies. Well, you came to the right guy. Follow me. Shocked as he was, Kanomi grabbed Sojiro by the shoulder and pulled him over to the wall. Kanomi had nearly burst out laughing when Sojiro, with a straight face, had admitted his difficulty with girls, but he realized it was the first time Sojiro had ever turned to him for advice. Sojiro was always able to break down any task at his part-time job into bite-sized pieces, but he was clearly struggling with a different problem now. This is going to take some serious effort. <laughs> Alright, give it to me straight, pal. How big did you mess up? Or screw up? Same shit, right? Uh, I didn't screw up yet. But it might happen soon. Kinomi, Tatoeba no Hanashi, Matobea ni Harisenbon Mitaina onanoko ga haite kita to sere. Uh, let's say a girl walks into the mad bear who's a prick who's who is prickly well, fuck, who's as prickly as a porcupine. She doesn't like me. Okay. Damn. Every time. But it's okay, Sojuro. You're a sweet boy. I'll allow it. She doesn't like me and wants me to leave, but I don't want to. Sojuro explained that he couldn't just quit his part-time job at the restaurant. He needed the money. Kanomi grunted a few times to indicate he was still following Sojiro's story. So, like, you want the girl to split? No, no, I, I just want her to be okay with me working there. Because the thing is, uh, I sort of don't not like her what don't not like her it's either you don't like her or you wait what the fuck or do not like her why okay that's this is definitely a translation error i'll let this one slide but don't not what if that's grammatically correct i'm done with i'm ending the series right here right now bro it's ending on whatever part this is <laughs> Sedro furrowed his brow 
Konomi cannot help but laugh at his friend's lack of manly resolve in his answer. Girls were the one area where Hosuke's skills and experience were triple those of Sojuro. Ha <laughs> <laughs> Aha! I see now. That's just the art of Florida, man. You want to get along with her, right? Sojuro was not sure how to respond. He nodded slowly without really understanding the implication of what Konomi had said. I don't know what to do. How can I get along with girls my age? You talk to the girls in our class all the time. Honestly, you make all the other guys look bad. You're a natural at it. Just keep being your usual self. Or your usual clueless self, and I'm sure you'll be fine. Being raised in the mountains makes you Mr. Mysterious. You gotta use that unique identity to your advantage. Really? I don't think being unusual is such a good thing, though. Like, how do you talk to someone who hates your guts? People in class are nice, but I'm dealing with a thorny beast here. Or uh, maybe a hedgehog is a better metaphor. So you buy a megina kain there. I think I ordered no much the simple than that. Don't be a chicken, man. You know what they say. A tiny thorn can stop a lion. She'll come around. Sajiro's brows sunk deeper still. All these abstract metaphors are too much for me. He needed more concrete material to work with. Come on, dude. You had to put some work to get to on a girl's good side. まずは女の趣味とか大事にしてるもんとか聞いてそこをフォローすればいい自分の都合より相手の都合だまずは外堀から攻めろってことだな。First, ask about her hobbies and stuff she likes. Then go from there. Think about what she wants, not what you want. You gotta blitz them from where they're weak, as they say. 外堀、外回りか。You mean... Don't be too direct. You got it. And then comes the most important part. Bribery. You gotta shower her with presents. Yo, is, is my boy Konomi teaching fucking uh, Sojuro how to riz up Alice, dog? That's wild. That's funny. If the supply matches the demand, she'll accept your gift even if she don't even if she don't like you. Then you've got her. She'll feel like she owes you one. Okay, can we talk about how like it's like two sides of the same coin right now? Even though Sojo is like trying to not die by talking to Alice, but Konomi doesn't know that. So Konomi just thinks that Sojuro is talking about some like random chick at his job. <laughs> That's funny. Konomi then proclaimed with an odd sense of pride that it, this approach had resulted in only failure for him. Uh, there's just one problem, Konomi. I get that girls like being taken out to dinner. But You can't afford it? I know. Trust me, I know, my friend. <laughs> I got you covered. <laughs> I 
I'm going to let you in on a, see, on, a, on a sweet little secret. An easy way to get some cold, hard dough. Drugs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They slid from the side of the classroom deeper into one corner. To in the front of the lockers, where no one ever stayed for long. It would be days before Sojo realized the suggestion he was receiving was of the illegitimate kind. The kind he would not have shared with anyone. Damn, okay. Okay. Alrighty, I think that's going to be it for today's episode, you guys. We got Konomi teaching uh, Sojo the Art of Riz, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Alright, so let's see what happens next time, man. So hopefully you guys did enjoy. And if you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Click the bell to get any notifications when I upload. It's your boy White Album. Signing out.